Hello, everybody. Gage says it's empty. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Hopefully this is going to be a big treat. And guys, before I get started, I had two different subscribers send me the same beer in the same week. I think they were like a day or two apart. Uh, this one comes from Sam. I also got another bottle in there that comes from John. I'm not going to review both the beers. They're both from the same batch. I got them in the same week. Uh, this happens that way sometimes. The subscribers send me stuff and I'll get two of them either from the same subscriber or two different subscribers send me the same beer. It's happened before. So I want to thank Sam and John both for sending me this beer uh, or the, these beers. Uh, the other one will go in. As a matter of fact, it's already in the fridge and uh, I'll drink that at my leisure. But I'm not going to review two of them of the same batch. and. I just don't do that. I, a lot of times you'll see me do a review uh, from stuff I've done two, three, four years ago, uh, especially if they've changed the recipe or the ABV or something in that. But both these bottles are identical. And on top of that, Three Floyds started dating their stuff a, uh, about a year or so ago. And these, neither one of these bottles have any dating on them. So I don't know whether the machine was broke down when they produced this beer, but there is no date on it. So Three Floyds, thumbs down. For that, this is a double IPA. We need that on there. So I don't. Uh, a lot of times, the machine breaks down. The beers keep rolling. They keep blowing. I mean, and then, you know, this one of them deals. The beer's not going to wait, and the machine will have to. So, uh, with that being said, I would like to see the date on here. I don't know. That was all. That's my only explanation. The machine was broke down because they have been dating everything. The bombers and the twelve ounces. They've had. So they've had a date on them, and neither one of these do. So that a lot. Of, sometimes you'll have a beer get through and not get to date on them. But we've got two different ones from two different people from two different areas, and neither one of them have a date on it. So. Hopefully uh, this is a brand new edition and uh, another reason why I'm not going to keep that other one very long. I'm going to probably drink it within the next week or so. <clears throat> but this one, like I said, this one come from Sam and the other one come from John. Uh, thank both of you guys for, uh, for sending me this beer. I'm a big Three Floyds fan, I really am. Uh, they do some really, really tasty stuff and most of their beers fly off the shelf. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. They they were arrogant there for a while, saying our beers don't sit on the shelf, we don't need to date them. But they finally stepped up to the plate and started dating them. Now I've got two of them here, the same beers that have no date. So it is what it is, guys. So uh, if you're looking for the Apocalypse Cow and, and it's available in your area, just be aware it's probably not going to have a date on it. So pick it up now because uh, if it's still on the shelf six months from now, it's going to be a lot maltier. Let's get on with this one, guys. This is an 11 percenter uh, commercial description on this. I'll be using our 100 on this. So double IPA with a big bitterness. Uh, a lot of malt used to produce a double IPA at 11 percent. So they have to have a lot of bitterness there to match all that sweetness up from that malt. Commercial description says this complex double IPA has an intense citrus and floral hop aroma balanced by a velvety malt body which has been argumented with lactose milk sugar. So, and that's something usually reserved for imperial porters and imperial stouts to make it a little sweeter. So this is a great big sweet beer that has lactose in it. So that's another reason why it has 100 IBUs to try to balance that out. Uh, with this different take on an IPA, we have brewed an ale that is both pleasing to drink and once again, not normal. Cheers, 100 IBUs, 11%, and it used to be 9.5%, so they've upped it up a little bit. 
So with that being said, I have not personally brewed uh, an IPA or a double IPA and used lactose in that. Uh, I've not I've not experimented with lactose in that. Now I've used it in some stouts and and uh, and porters before, but I've not used it in an IPA. I've not had to. I, uh, most of the stuff that I brew tends tends to come out pretty balanced. Uh, the hops that I use and the malt that I use, uh, I don't want to throw some lactose in there because the yeast can't eat that sugar and have it overly sweet. So uh, I guess I could try that. Uh, maybe I will one of these days. I, I'll brew a, a great big IPA and uh, throw a little bit of uh, lactose in there, but you're going to have to add a substantial amount of bittering hops to counteract that sweetness. So it's a fine balance uh, of getting that right. You don't want something that's too bitter, and then you don't want something that's too sweet. So it's, uh, you know, I'm sure they did some small test batches uh, to get this recipe right. The amount of sugar, amount of lactose they're using, and the amount of bittering hops they're using to, to get that right. So we're going to find out here in just a minute. All right, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about there, so let's go over to the food pairings. So this is a double IPA. It says the cuisine is barbecue, cheeses are peppery. Monterey Pepper Jack Sharp Blue Cheddar, you more pungent cheeses, Gorgonzola Limburger, and the meat is game grilled meat and salmon, glassware, to snipper, tulip oversized wine glass. I was going to bring out the double glass, but I, I'm going to do this one in the solvent beer glass since it's an IPA. And it says here it can be set up for long periods, but I would not recommend that. It's going to turn into a malt bomb after about three to six months. In my opinion, guys, there are some people that they get boozy boozy beers and want to sell them and sometimes the booziness will will subside a little bit but a lot of times it don't I mean it'll be just as boozy a year or two down the road than it is when you first tried it so sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't so well that's all we need to talk about so it's time to get the cap off this 22 ounce bomber and once again I want to thank Sam and John both for sending these beers to me Smell the sweetness from here. All right, and you can see from that pour, a good two fingers of head, really tight bubbles around the outside, a little bit bigger on in there, but there is some creaminess in the top. Over to the light, I can see the bulb through it. It's got a slight chill haze to it, especially through the big part of the glass here, the bulb part. Down in the bottom, it's a little more yellower, and a lot of bubbles streaming up. Good looking beer, good looking double IPA. A lot of times they'll be a light color like this, and sometimes they'll be a little bit darker than this, depending on the malt that they use. Let's get a nose on it. Right off the bat, big grapefruity smell on this. Monster grapefruit smell. Pine, citrus, grapefruit. Maybe some hint of some tropical fruit notes in there. But the grapefruit is standing out more than anything else. It doesn't say what hops they use here. Let me see what this site says. No, it doesn't have it listed. Yeah, but the grapefruit is the very first thing. It's, it's more pungent than anything else, the grapefruit. And they, to my knowledge, have not added any grapefruit or grapefruit juice to this beer. You're getting all that from the hops that they've used. Hmm, smells pretty good. Let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Sam. Cheers, John. Thank you, brothers. I am getting the sweetness from the lactose. It is a sweet beer, even though it's 100 IBUs, because they've used the lactose which leaves that sweetness there because the yeast cannot eat that during fermentation. It does not drink like a 100 IBU double IPA. Much sweeter than a typical double IPA would be. Now, if you're wanting to try a double IPA, 
that doesn't have a massive amount of bitterness, it would be something like this that they used lactose in to keep that sweetness in the beer. If I was blindfolded, I would I would not think this would be a hundred IBUs. But with the lactose being introduced into this beer during fermentation, I can taste that. I can taste that sweetness. It's really rather pleasant. Add on the sweet side, but it still has 100 IBUs, which is so well hidden. It's amazing that they can do do stuff like this. And uh, it's 100 IBUs. Well, that's going to be bitter. Well, now they use lactose, so it's going to be sweet. What? And it is, and it is. Wow, it's amazing that it's got that much bitterness to it, and you can't, and it doesn't seem to be bitter when you when you taste it because of the lactose. Well. I've got another half a bottle here. I'm going to pour a glass for her. Sip on this for a while. Come back. Pretty impressive so far. Let's see where it ends up. I'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for stay, staying around. I've got a little bit uh, left here. I've been sipping on it probably about uh, 35, 40 minutes. Very unique beer being used uh, with lactose in the brewing process to give them that additional sweetness on the beer. Even though it has 100 IBUs, it's very sweet on the, on the, on the back end where it's usually a, a lot more bitterness on a double IPA with 100 IBUs. But all these brewers are doing something out of the box and doing stuff different. And uh, not the first one I've had uh, uh, that's had lactose used in, in the brewing process uh, for an IPA or a double IPA. They're doing different things uh, to give it a little bit more sweetness or, or a little more bitterness or to balance out the bitterness or, or balance out the sweetness. So, uh, very unique. Final joke. Awesome lacing left on the glass. Very well made beer. Which I'm not surprised. Three Floyds does some really tasty stuff. But the bitterness is just not there for 100 IBUs with lactose being used. It has a nice sweetness to it. Not overly sweet, but sweeter than a typical double IPA with 100 IBUs. So, very tasty, very unique. I enjoyed this one. Uh, very nice beer. It is a very nice beer, but as far as I'm concerned, whether the dating machine was, was broken when they ran these bottles or what the excuse is, it should have a date on it for a double IPA. And it does not. Neither bottle that I have has a date on it. So as far as I'm concerned, guys, you know where I'm going with this. This is a nine beer in an eight bottle. And that's where I'm going to put it, too. Uh, I would, if this had, beer had a date on it, I would probably gave it a 97 or 98 somewhere in that but it has no date so it's going to get to 93 94 somewhere in that area i don't think it's quite to the uh, 100 scale but it is a uh it's not a 10 beer to me but it is a nine beer but it's in an eight bottle with no date on it so that's where i'm gonna that's where i'm gonna put it if i was putting a numeric rating on the information that i have it would be a 92 or a 93 that's where i would put it so uh but it is tasty, don't get me wrong. If you can get this at the brewery, or, or if you can get it now, because I know these are fresh bottles and they just come out, uh, it's a great beer to pick up and give it a try. But I, I, I'm a stickler for this. You need to have a date on your IPAs and a, a double IPAs. Uh, and if a machine is broken down, I don't know how many bottles they're producing per hour, Maybe you need somebody at the end of the line putting stickers on these uh, with a date on it so you'll, so you'll know. But a lot of these breweries are kind of arrogant and, and they say, well, it don't even stay on the shelf or, or don't make it to the shelf or, or whatever. And there's a lot of breweries that way. And then people are standing in line when the truck backs in, they don't even get to the shelf and, the, and they're taking them off the truck or, or buying them uh, before it even gets into the store. So. But that's still, that's, you still want a date on your beers, guys. I do anyway. So that's where I'm going to put it. Uh, I'm going to give it the 8, which is the A-minus. 
Uh, like I said, if I was putting a new Merrick rating on this, it would probably be a 92, 93, somewhere in that area. Over to Beer Advocate, they say it's a 93, so we're in agreement there. And over to Rate Beer, uh, Rate Beer says it's 99 overall and 98 in the style. Had a date on the bottle, I would not argue with that at all. But since there's no date, eh, it's not going to get that great for me, guys. Not going to get it, even though it's that good of a beer. we got to have the dates. And uh, kind of disappointed in three points because this beer is not dated since they've been dating uh, all the stuff that I've been sent uh, the, the last year. It's had dates on them. 12 ounce and the 22 ounce bottles have had dates on them, and this one does not. So, uh, if it had been a stout or something like that, it wouldn't be quite as critical. But I would like to see the the month or the year uh, on those style of beers. But this is a double IPA, and uh, if this by chance, by some wild chance, that it did make it to the shelf and sat on the shelf for eight, nine, ten, twelve months. This beer is going to be a malt bomb in, in a year's time. It, it is. It's just going to be way malty. And with the lactose being used in there, it's going to be super sweet with the hops being uh, faded over time like that. So, But we're going to wrap it up. I'm not going to keep harping on it. I want to say thanks again. My hat's off to Sam and John for sending uh, these beers to me. Uh, I will enjoy the other one uh, at my leisure and probably within the next week or two. But uh, it was a tasty beer. It was a well-made beer. Uh, I just need to take guys. Uh, so if you've had this one from Apocalypse Cow, three, the Apocalypse Cow, a double IPA from Three Floyds, let me know what you think. I enjoyed it. It was pretty damn tasty. But just a little disappointed. No dating on the bottles. All right, guys. That's wrapping it up for this one. If you've had it, let me know. Uh, let's come on back tomorrow and go see what's in the fridge. See you then.